Welcome on in Eagles fans to episode 21 of the No Huddle Show, our Philadelphia Eagles podcast right here on NJ.com. I'm Joe Giglio with me as always, Elliot Shore Parks, Mark Eckel. They cover the Eagles for NJ Advanced Media. We're recording this podcast on a Monday morning right after the end of week 15, the Sunday of week 15, where the Eagles go down on Sunday Night Football 40 to 17. Uh, it got ugly at home to the Arizona Cardinals, but it's all still in front of them. We'll get to all that. We'll, we'll talk about this game and, and the scenarios now left in the wacky NFC East. Elliot, we'll start with you. Uh, I know you were, you were pretty confident the Eagles maybe had turned a corner a little bit. They were going to play a good game on Sunday Night Football. I think a lot of people were expecting that considering they played two in a row against you know decent competition in the Bills, good yeah. competition in the Patriots, and then they came out and, and Sunday Night was just it was the opposite of that against, uh, against Arizona. Yeah, I mean, not only did I think they had turned a corner, I thought they would actually win last night, which obviously proved proved not to be the case. But, I mean, they played with the Cardinals for, you know, two and a half, three quarters. But that key stretch there in the, in the third quarter right into the start of the fourth where I think they turned it over on three straight drives. Obviously, you play a team as good as the Cardinals. You turn the ball over like that, you know, there's very few teams, very few teams you're going to beat, let alone play, um, let alone the Cardinals. So that was kind of the nail in the coffin for them. The, you know, what does this mean in the big picture? Um, we going into last night, um, you know, you knew it didn't, the game really didn't mean anything. I mean, it did it in some regards, but really it's going to come down to next Saturday against the Redskins. So, you know, does, does last night change my opinion of the Eagles? Maybe slightly, but I think we kind of knew that deep down this wasn't one of the best, you know, three teams in the NFC, which the Cardinals are. And I know, you know, Mark has said he thinks they're the best team in the N- in the, the whole NFL, and he might be right about that after watching last night. So I think it's pretty clear the Eagles aren't ready to compete with those elite-level teams. The good news is the Redskins are not an elite-level team. And if they can win next week, you know, the season obviously is, is it's back. So right now I guess it's gone. It seems like every week we're debating whether the season's on or not. But, you know, last night was ugly, but they can they can make up for it next week. They can. And, Mark, I mean, did last night, did Sunday Night Football – change anything for you? I mean, it was weird because the game didn't really matter going into it, although if they won and then they won again this coming Saturday, they could have won the division. But did it really change anything? Not really. I mean, like you, you said earlier, did you know they did they turn the corner? Yeah, they, they turned the corner and they ran into a Mack truck called named the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> I mean, they're just not – I mean, I, I picked it closer than I – probably wanted to or should have. But, I mean, I didn't think there was any way they could win that game last night. Just Again, I'm a big matchup guy. And sometimes you, like an up, upsets happen in the NFL. Like a, a team that's not quite as good overall beats a team that's better just because they match up certain ways better. Like they're run – maybe the one – like the, the good team runs the ball really well, but the, the other team has a great run defense. You know, whatever. The, the matchups last night were glaring. Like, I mean, there was no way the Eagles secondary – was going to be able to shut down that group of wide receivers. They just were not. I mean, the Eagles have a hard time against one premier wide receiver. Like, a, you know, we saw Ope going all the way back to opening night, what, uh, what what Julio Jones did did to him. I mean, you know, they can handle – maybe now that they've gotten a little better where if you have one great one and a bunch of okay ones, all right, maybe they can get by. Barry Fitzgerald's a, a stud. Michael Floyd's very good. John Brown – He's not as good as people think because he, he got his hands are bad. He they should have had you know two more touchdowns last night if Brown catches the ball first play of the game. But he can run. He can run like a deer. And when you have that kind of speed, you have to you have to worry about it. So you know. And then their their tight end made some good plays. I mean that's just a good team. And then on defense, I didn't see the Eagles wide receivers making a lot of leeway against a pretty good secondary led by a guy that. I think mean, all of a sudden people forgot all about Patrick Peterson. I don't know why. I mean, a couple of years ago, it was is, is he as good as Revis? Now, uh, Josh Norman's better and this guy's better. Now, not or not, Patrick Peterson is still a top three to five cornerback. Maybe, I mean, you can argue the best in, in the league. And the, and and their other guys, you know, they're, they're not as good as Peterson, but they're not bad. And that, they, they have playmakers. That's what the Cardinals are. Why I think the Cardinals are the best team in football, as always early. They make plays on both sides of the ball. Deion Buchanan, the guy that um, they, who they, what a great move that was. He was they drafted him as a safety, but they they saw that he was better fit as a linebacker. Makes a great play last last night or uh, Sunday night. So I mean, you know, that's a good team. So the Eagles losing to them, I, I didn't, if they would have won, I'd have been shocked. I would have said, "Wow, 
that would have changed things. And to ask if things change, had they had somehow found a way to win that game and beat the Patriots and the Cardinals in the span of a month, I would I would have been like, whoa, wait a minute now, this team might we, this team might be onto something. But no, they're they're just a. We'll see what next two weeks what they are. I guess we will. We will. I mean, that's what it, that's what that's it comes what down to now. You get the next two weeks, you get the Eagles and the Redskins and the Giants somehow still involved in this thing. Uh, for the Eagles, it's simple. If they win the next two games, if they beat the Redskins at home on Saturday night and they beat the Giants the week after that, they win the NFC East, which is, I mean, it's, it's amazing to think about it like that because, you know, that they've played so poorly this year, but it's still all in front of them. Um, and now we go into this, I mean, Elliot, I think we've had this conversation you know, 15 times over the course of this year on this show about handicap for this division and, and everything going into it. But, I mean, how do you feel about this? There's two weeks to go. I mean, last night didn't change anything in terms of that for the Eagles. If they beat the Redskins, beat the Giants, they win this division. Yeah, it's kind of what we've been saying, you know, the whole time, that this season's going to come down to the last two games. I mean, before the, the stretch of these last five games where they had the Patriots, the Bills, the Cardinals, and then these last two, I said to win the division, they would have to win one of those three of the first three and then the last two. And that's basically, that's what happened. So, I mean, as Mark said, you know, the loss last night, you know, it, it was a bad loss, but in retrospect, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't mean much. Now, the question is, can they rebound and beat beat the Redskins? Because the Redskins, you know, all season, I haven't believed in them, but here they are. And if they win on Saturday night and they beat the Eagles in Philadelphia, they win They win the division, right? So, I mean, they only went away. I I don't know. I mean, can this Eagles team rebound from, from a loss like this? They've done it before, certainly. They've had very bad losses. I mean, they rebounded from getting blown out in Detroit to beat the Patriots. So this is certainly doable. And wouldn't it be ironic if the season – because you, you look at the you know the first 15 games or 14 games of the season, the worst loss they probably had, um, or at least the most costly, might have been that, uh, that Redskins one back in week three where they let uh, – Kirk Cousins drive down the field so it'll be you know Billy Davis has spoken about that it'll be interesting to see if they're putting that exact same scenario next week with much more on the line how they do but I don't know I Kirk Cousins is playing well it's gonna be it means it's definitely not a gimme game whatsoever for the Eagles they're gonna have to play very very well to win the game you know who's playing well is your old friend Elliot Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson well that's bad news because Byron Maxwell's injured so he put up a buck and a half yesterday against Buffalo Six. And it was what a year ago, a year ago this weekend it was this past weekend it where it was week sixteen. Similar, isn't it? it is same spot. It's a Saturday night, uh, week sixteen of the it's season. Just, it, it just happens to be in Philly instead of instead of in DC. Right, it, it is eerily similar. I mean, these are the scenarios here: the Eagles win twice, they win the division. Uh, the Redskins, if they win, uh, if they beat the Eagles, they win this division. And the Giants somehow could still do it if they win twice, including being the Eagles, uh, and have the Redskins lose twice, which would include a loss to Dallas. Um, Ellie, you mentioned Billy Davis there uh, when you were talking about the, the, you know, this game coming up on Saturday night uh, and that game they lost to the Redskins. I mean, can you give me a feel on the Eagles' defense? I, I think for two weeks against the Patriots and Bills, we started to say, all right, they rallied, they rebounded here. But now, I mean, you go back, it's three out of five. They've given up 40 or more points. I mean, they're on pace to give up over 400 points this season. This was a pretty good defense in the first half of the season. And now I'm almost sitting here wondering that, you know, if the Patriots had all their players, you know, what, what would we be saying about this defense over the last month and a half? I mean, they've had some bad games. Yeah, I mean, I've probably been one of the bigger believers in the Eagles defense among the people that cover the team. I just, you know, you mentioned that the first half of the season, I thought they were, they were kind of, they were, they were decent, if not, you know, pretty good. They, they were creating turnovers or getting the quarterback. It seems like that all just kind of went away, you know, just very quickly. And I don't know if that's because of the competition. I mean, as you mentioned, you know, just to get the win in New England, I know they, I think they gave, ended up giving them 28 points. But I thought they played very well in that game. Last week, you only give up 19, I think it was, to the Bills. But then it just all falls apart, apart again. You give up 33 points to the Cardinals, who, as Mark, like Mark said, do have a very good offense. But it's just the you know, consistency is not there. I mean, last night, obviously, you lose both your cornerbacks. That that's not ideal. I mean, at one point it was EJ Biggers and uh, Jalen Watkins out there against that Cardinals offense. So I think it's hard to kind of blame Billy Davis. You might for be that, out but... next week, Ellie. Yeah. Well, my my point is, I think it's hard to blame Billy Davis. You know, for this, for the you know that having his secondary get beat up by the Cardinals when you're missing both your cornerbacks. But again, with Billy Davis, it's the overall pitcher, and it's not just his time in Philadelphia. I know Joe, you've brought this up a few times, but. You know, when he was with uh, Arizona, when he was with Cleveland before, the results weren't good. And the results have, you know, for all of their good games they've had, 
you know, every once in a while, they, they do create turnovers and all that. They give up a lot of points, and the secondary continues to be an issue, even though you're getting strong, I think, strong secondary play from Walter Thurman, or at least you were at the beginning of the season. You invested in Byron Maxwell. So there's really, at this point, there's no excuse for, for Billy Davis. Maybe Maybe just last night you can look and say, all right, you know, the two cornerbacks. But in the grand scheme of things, the defense continues to be an issue, and this is going to be three years in now where Billy Davis hasn't been able to fix it. And, you know, 15 years into his career where he hasn't been able to show he can produce a defense that's even close to finishing, you know, top 10-ish. They haven't. I mean, he always has bad defenses. And now, I mean, they're going to need their defense, Mark, in these last two games. You know, regardless of, of how they're, they're going to go try to win them, they're going to need their defense to play much better than it is right now. And to me, the, the thing that worries you the most is the tackling on Sunday night against the Redskins, uh, excuse me, the Cardinals, was, it was embarrassing. Embarrassing. And, and that's not coach. I mean, he doesn't coach him not to tackle. That's bad play. That's just, that's just NFL players. And, and, and let's be honest. I mean, like we sometimes say, oh, this guy's bad or this guy's not. If you're in the NFL, you're a good player. Do you know how hard it is? I mean, if, if you think about all the high school kids that play, then all the college kids that play, and only the elite of the elite make it to the NFL. So they're good players. These guys have tackled their whole lives from the time they start playing JV high school ball, right? So, I mean, or even earlier than that. So they know how to tackle. That is just, last night, that was just embarrassing from a, to watch guys that get paid to play this game at the highest level, not making simple tackles, getting dragged down the field. You know, the one, the, I mean, give David Johnson, he played a heck of a game. The, the rookie from, was it Northern Iowa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 229 total yards. Incredible per- performance by him. But come on, tackle him. You, you, you learned how to do that, you know, 15 years ago. I mean, that was just, again, Billy Davis deserves a lot of blame for this overall defensive year. But last night, I couldn't put any, I really can't blame Billy Davis for the, he didn't tell them, hey, guys, I don't want you to tackle tonight. I mean, come on. That was, that was just. The players, the players have to step up. Players have to take responsibility. And last night, that defense just—I don't know if they were—I don't know what it was. I really, I, it's hard to say to watch to watch NFL players play that poorly. It's like dropping. Can we, can we can we mark it down that today's a day? Mark Eichel said Marcus Smith is a good player. It's but, not. <laughs> never said that. <laughs> in a way, in a way, he did. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Doesn't make the NFL. Well. He probably shouldn't have got drafted. That was a, that was a big <laughs> Hey, I, hey I, wanted, I, I wanted to stop the game last night. He got, he got a half a sack. It's a big... I wanted to stop the game, give him the ball, something. It's like when a baseball uh, player gets his 3,000 hit, everyone yeah. stops, give a big round of applause. Hey, hey it, might, it might not be too long before he breaks into single figures in sacks. <laughs> He's always like halfway there. He's only halfway yeah. there. Um, so, Mark, you mentioned David Johnson, the running back for the Cardinals, had a great game. I mean, he's now in history with Jim Brown in terms of uh, that many yards and touchdowns in a game against the Eagles. It, it's insane. Oh and then on the other side of it, uh, I mean, David Johnson's a rookie, third round pick, making, you know, chump change compared to other running backs, including DeMarco Murray. Um, th- th- that guy who didn't basically didn't play last night. Murray, DeMarco Murray. I've heard of him. Yeah, he, he's on the Eagles, I think. Uh, I want to ask you guys about. We'll get into the Murray stuff just overall, but the play call that people are talking about uh, after the game. So it was fourth and one, 17 10. I mean, the game was close early, 17 10, right before the half. Uh, the Eagles are, where are they? About the 10 or 12 eight yard, yard eight line? Yard. Eight yard line. Okay. And they leave Matthews in. They, first of all, Chip decides to go for it, Elliot. And then yeah. they leave Matthews in, not Murray. And NBC, I'm sure you guys have seen it now, but NBC right away on the television broadcast had the stat ready that DeMarco Murray was 12 for 12 perfect this year on third and fourth and one. Uh, you know, he had him in stop once. He get, that's the one thing he's done well this year. They keep Matthews in. They don't he get it. He can get a yard. Yeah, but what did you think about, first of all, the call, Elliot, and then not putting Murray in for that play? Well, I, I said before the play I, I would not have gone for it. I would have kicked the points. I mean, obviously they ended up losing by 33 or whatever, or 23 points, so it didn't really end up mattering. But at the time, I mean, you mentioned that the game's closed. You're right before the half. Um, you have a chance to cut it down to four. You're getting the ball back to start to start the third quarter. You know, then you could then you potentially could take the lead with a touchdown. So I thought I, I thought going for it was was not the right call, just to start. And then look, they didn't use Murray because they don't think Murray's very good. I mean, I, I know he's 12 for 12 in that situation, and I, you know, we can all make the argument that he should have been in there, and he probably should have. But it's clear that they don't think DeMarco Murray is good. I mean, otherwise he would have been in there. He, he played eight snaps last night, and they were all pretty meaningless. I mean, he had two carries for three yards. 
the times he was out there, he was more of a decoy where I don't know why anybody would view him as a decoy at this point because he doesn't do anything or he never gets the ball. But look, I mean, they can't, they can't make it any more clear. Like against the Patriots, they said DeMarco didn't play because the linebackers for the, uh, for the Patriots were, 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 were really big. Well, the Cardinals linebackers, one of them used to be a safety. So there's no excuse as to what – there's no there's no rational reason as to why Murray shouldn't play last night unless you don't think he's any good. And that's, that's really the only thing you can take away from it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Chip, it, it, Chip on Monday morning – and then, Mark, I want to hear what you have to say. Chip did say on Monday morning they were rotating the backs, and they just didn't have many carries on Sunday night. So, oh you know, that, that's just what happened. Yeah, he's How the game expressed itself. That's yeah. a, he used that. He used that. He loves that term. But that's yeah. what he said last night after after the game Sunday night. He said, um, "We, you know, he was asked if the game plan was to not use Murray like it was against New England, and he said, no, we, you know, we wanted, you know, we didn't run enough. We we fell behind and we had to throw when we thought the other guys were better, you know, in the passing game. But for come on, Chip. I mean, look, put, you know, make put Chip on a, on a lie detector, and he's going to say." Guys, you've been killing me for using Murray because he because he stinks. Now I'm not using him, and you're still killing me. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone's killing him for not using Murray. I think everyone just wants him to admit that he's, well, he's not, not good. Gonna he's that not going to do player. that, right? He's not no, going to do no that. So say that. I, I, no coach in the NFL, maybe Rex Ryan, but no other no, no other coach in the league would would say, "Hey guys, come on, Murray Murray's not any good. I can't put him out there. He's, you guys don't want." He can't say that because a he may need him. What if Matthews and Sproles gets hurt next week? And he, and he has to play Murray against the Giants. He can't kill him. And then, no, he can't say any of that. So, you know, actions always speak louder than, than, than words. So we know what he thinks. He thinks Murray's a bad. <laughs> and he's right. I mean, you know, uh, Murray's not has had a terrible, terrible season. I'm not ready to say DeMarco Murray is done forever. I think he's a, he's a, a victim of what we've talked about in the past. Last year he had 400 and whatever touches. Guys that do that. Don't have a good next year. Now, does he bounce back in 2016? Well, who knows? I don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball, but there's a chance. I mean, this guy was a pretty darn good back at one point. It's not like he's a guy that he's not Marcus Smith who they just drafted high and thought he was good, but he isn't. It's this guy has pedigree. I mean, we we've seen it before. He's, he's just having a miserable season. And the issue is, the issue, I mean, you know. We, we, we talk about this all the time. Will, will he be back next season? And I know there's, there's cap implications. We'll get into that. But just, you know, the, the, the hard part about it is if this guy's on the team, it's going to be a distraction every week. And, you know, last but night. He, well. I was, all right, uh, sorry, what would you say? If he's on the team next year and opening day they play the – pick a team, I don't care. The Giants. They open with the Giants. And he, and he, st- and he starts and he gains, you know, 90 yards and scores, scores a touchdown and Eagles win. He's okay. That's the Demarco Murray we thought we were. That, that's the 2014 Demarco Murray. He's only yeah, this, but at this point, at this point, that would be like a minor miracle. Okay. I mean, he, he, you know, like he, oh, he never. That's about that. Guys have had bad years and come back the next year and have a good year. He's not like he's hurt. Isn't that more concerning? You're, no, I mean, he you're just willing, doesn't seem. You're willing to give Colin. You want Colin Kaepernick here. And I'm not. Right, but Colin Kaepernick's not going to cost him. The difference is, first of all. I think Colin Kaepernick, my reasoning for him is he needs a change of scenery. I think I just don't think it's working out with DeMarco Murray here. Not I just don't. Year. It isn't. This year, it's certainly, I, there's no argument. But to say him gaining 90 yards in a game would be a minor miracle. Come on. He, he, he had a 100-yard game this year earlier in the season. All right. But it, but it once, would be so a miracle of, because Chip I mean, won't play him. That, that's, the, like, that, that's the strangest part to me as this has gone on here is. You're trying to win. Is, to win with your best players. He's not one okay, of those. Okay, but so that's my night, point. So right, I get that. Next year. In week Go one ahead, next Ellie. year, you think he's – well, that's my point. So in week one next year, you think they're going to give him the ball 20 times? Has it just feels to... like they're trying to force it. And I just don't think you ever want to be in a position in the NFL, especially Chip, a guy who, for better or worse, certainly I don't think he doesn't like talented players, but he doesn't like to have to feature one guy, if that makes sense. Like, like do you really want to try to shape the whole offseason around, like, featuring DeMarco Murray? No, and they, well, no, and they shouldn't have paid him. Then, I mean, that's the philosophy, and I and you're probably right on that. I guess to me, the question is: or that game got out of hand last night, and you know, Chip Kelly seems like a guy to me that doesn't like nonsense and he doesn't like all this drama stuff. But yet, it feels like almost he's a- adding to it. I mean, if you just throw Murray out there a little bit in the fourth quarter, try to see if he gets something going when the game is pretty much over. I mean, it's a story now because he didn't play him at all. Basically, he got two carries. 
that becomes a story. If he threw him out there a little bit, I don't think we're talking about it as much because then we could just, you know, he could use that line, Mark, and say, right. well, against I'm just the, rotating the backs. Right. And that's what he did. I mean, you know, he didn't play much against New, New England. And they won. And he, he explained it away, like Elliot said, by saying the matchups, blah, blah, blah. Then the Bills, they all played about the same, give or take a care, a couple snaps here, between Sproles, um, Murray, and Matthews. They were all within five snaps, which is – that's – Pretty, that's pretty good on if – it, if it really is Deuce Daly doing it, that's pretty good to balance it out that, that, that way. But the last night it was clear that Ryan Matthews was the, was the guy and Sproles was, you know, number two. And, that was, and they weren't – you know, Murray played a handful of snaps more than Kenyon Barner who didn't play at all. So and I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I guess I agree to this point with what you're saying, Joe, about just putting him out there in the blowout, even just because at that point – That might be more about You put your backups in. But, but the reality is – he didn't play, I think, maybe one or two. He played one or two snaps in the first half when the game was close. And in, like, that fourth and one play we talked about, that was when that, – that's all you need to know. Even if Murray would have played the last 15 snaps of the game last night and his total would have ended up at 22, that wouldn't have mattered. The reality is when the game was close and it mattered, Murray was not in the game. And, you well, know, so like it's the, not using him on fourth and one is just like not using him when I thought he should have been out there at the end of the Patriots game when they had the lead and all they wanted to do was kill the clock. And they had Barner out there who fumbled. And well, let me let me let me ask you guys this. So, I mean, we last night in the press box, we we were talking about like you know what's going on, and we mentioned like maybe Murray's sick, like you know maybe something happened because it was just so staggering he wasn't out there at all. I mean, do you think maybe this has gotten personal between Chip and Demarco? I mean, you know, Ch- Demarco talked to the owner. He had to have a sit down talk with Chip. I mean, to not put him out there, it was almost like he was being punished. You know, I mean, I, you, you told me you don't think DeMarco's why, good. Why give him the, 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 the two carries and eight, six, eight plays that he did play? Just bench him entirely. I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know to the degree. I'm just saying, like, to not put him out there on the fourth and one and, like, all that, to, I don't know. It just feels like, See, everybody just, feels like intentionally trying not to play him, I guess. Is, again, I'm wondering why. Like, yeah, you know, I felt that way, too. I, I, I felt that. I mean, it, it seems weird now. I mean. I, I don't get it. I mean, I don't get the way he's handled them. It's one thing that his production has gone down. They're trying to win. I get that. And you have to play all the backs and you have to split the carries. I'm fine with that. But two carries for a guy you paid that kind of money to? I mean, if he's not hurt, you think he's that bad that he can't get on the field? That's – that's I, I've never seen anything like this. And it's not like Matthews had a great game either. No. Matthews did not – I didn't think Matthews, Matthews had one good run. Or, I mean – because I could see that. I mean, if the game plan was, all right, we're going to start Ryan Matthews tonight. We're going to work. We're going to rotate in. And Matthews is like, for instance, the Cardinals. The Cardinals, going into last night's game, probably didn't think David Johnson was going to run for 187 yards. Probably not. I don't think <laughs> said, you know what? Tonight, David, you're going, to go, you're going to go for 187. So you're going to be the guy. We're going to give you 29 carries. No. With, with two of their backs, Chris Johnson's out. Andre Ellington is hurt. He's out. They're going to, their plan was to rotate. David Johnson, the, the Williams kid, and probably sets, uh, Taylor. But when Johnson is running the way he is, Arians isn't stupid. Let's, you know, you feed the hot hand. I think if, if Matthews would have been, been having the kind of game David Johnson had, well, I can't. No, I say, listen, I don't, you can't put Murray in. Matthews is having the game of his life. But Matthews had 11 for 58, which looks good on paper. 5.3, you know, 5.3 yard average. But one run was 20 yards. So he had that one good run. The rest of it was 10 carries for 38 yards. That's not special. Right. And, you know, at a certain point, you're going to have to start asking. All right, so last night, um, the Eagles, they lose Maxwell and Rowe, and they're down to just Watkins and Biggers. And Denzel Rice, uh, you know, whether he's ready or not, whatever. I mean. You better be ready next. Well, well but, all right, but this is, this is where, where I'm going with this is if you're only going to play DeMarco two snaps and he's not going to play special teams. Or, I'm sorry, if you're going to play him eight snaps and give him two carries, he's not going to play special teams. Like, why is he dressed? Like, I mean, look, I'm not – you said earlier, Mark, people were killing Chip when he was playing him, and now that he's not playing, we're killing him. I'm not killing Chip for not playing him. I'm just saying if you don't think he's any any good, like, why is he dressed then? Like, like it's just – it's, it's weird to me. From, instead of last night. What? Who do you dress instead of him last night? Well, I don't know about last night, but my point is, like, going into next week, I mean, do you dress him? If, if you're going to be down potentially – I don't know. That's a good question. If – if Max if Maxwell plays, if, if Maxwell gets cleared and he says, "Listen, I'm going to try to go, coach. It's a big game. I got to be out there." All right, but you know it's he's you know one shot to that shoulder and, and he's going to be out. You yeah. have Rice has to be up. 
I gotta I gotta address all if if Roe and Maxwell are cleared to play, I think I gotta address bit you know, Biggers and, and uh No matter what. Watkins right, right. and Rice just because. So somebody else has to go down, whether it's Barner, Murray. Well, Barner plays whatever. special teams though. So that you know, like Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. And yeah, Marcus Smith is on a hot streak, so you got to keep him yeah. going. But I got to have all my corners up. I got to have all my corners. You know, now if Maxwell can't go, when well, Maxwell sits and rises up, and you're still back where you were. But but in, yeah, and so that like, and so this is my larger point. Like, if you're not going to play Murray, like, why is he on the team? Like, because I, I, the cap ramifications. But but at a certain point, you just got to cut your losses. Okay. Like, then don't complain. Like, are we going to be are we in week five next year? We're going to be doing the no huddle show. We're going to be saying like, man, Murray's not playing. What's going on? Like, you know, I mean, at a certain point, like if he's not going to play, I get the I get it costs a lot, you know, to cut him. I get that. But it's yeah. like, why have him here? I, believe me, I understand exactly what you're saying. And if there wasn't a salary cap, he probably wouldn't. He probably he may be gone by now. But yeah. but there is. And to carry thirteen million dollars on your cap for a guy that is that, that's playing for the uh, Indianapolis Colts is is, is rough. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. It really I mean, is. Maybe you can trade him. I don't think. I don't I think don't, you can't trade. Who, who's going to give you? Who's first of all? Who's going to take on that contract? Well, no, I know. Yeah, I mean, that's. I agree. So you probably can't trade him. No. I don't come. know. I just. It just feels like it's such a bad. You know. You know. I. Like, I wonder if, like, him and Chip get – I don't know. It just seems like it's such a bad situation. Maybe the off season, you know, they can they figure get, things I, out. I don't, they got to come – they got to meet. They got to go 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 away for a weekend or something. Have a little re- – re- <laughs> <laughs> sing Kumbaya, hold hands, whatever. Whatever do. works. No, the, the part to me is, Elliot, you raised the question of is it personal or not. Is Now, you guys could speak more of this to me. I was just reading and hearing some of it. But was DeMarco asked after the game if, if he thought the game plan would be this limited for him? Yeah. He was, right? Yeah. yeah he I, said I, no. Yeah. He go said ahead. no. Yep. Yeah, he – so DeMarco is not, does not like talking to the media and I don't blame him. So, you know, he, he did talk to him. I give him that. He did he, talk. No, he did talk. He did talk. I mean, he, he tried not to, which I mean, whatever, if he doesn't want to talk, you know, but so he, he talked though, he talked and he said he was surprised he didn't play that much. And I, you know, I asked him before the Patriots game, you knew that you weren't, he, he had said he knew he wasn't going to play that much because of the game plan. And he said he did not know that going into last night's game. And then I also asked him, you know, you met with Lori, you talked with Chip. You know, did you think things were going to change? And he's, you know, he said, oh, those were good meetings, blah, blah. But just, you know, being there and, and listening to him talk, I mean, it's clear he's not happy. I mean, he can say whatever he wants. And when you read the quotes, obviously. How can he be? If he is happy, then I, I, I like him even less because then he, if, if he's happy, about my, then he's like just saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm stealing money. You can't be yeah. happy. You're a professional athlete and you're only on the field for whatever, how many snaps he was on the field for and only got two carries. You can't be happy. But I think there's a difference between like, like him not being happy and like Kenyon Barner not being happy. Well, no, like well, yeah, exactly. Kenyon Barner knows he's happy. Kenyon Barner's happy that he made the team. There's a difference. Right. This guy led the league in rushing last year, not five years ago. Last year, he was the NFL's best running back. Right. Right. I mean, well, this I to me goes back to that, communication. But... That's what it goes back to. I mean, I, you, had all, you had all those stories in the offseason about Chip and some of the guys that left, and how he doesn't communicate. I mean, forget all the. You know the the bigger headline stories about Chip and what you know what kind of person he is. If we're just looking at him as a coach, the, the people were saying and ex players saying he doesn't communicate. That's what this Murray thing feels like. Where you know, like you just said, Elliot, he didn't have any idea this kind of night was coming for him, and then he's standing there looking, you know, lost on the sideline, and NBC's loving it because they're putting a camera on him every five seconds, and it just makes the yeah. Eagles look dysfunctional because he, you know he thinks he's a starting back and he's not even a player anymore. But but what's Chip supposed to say? He's supposed to go up to him and be like, "Yo, Demarco, like we both know you're not doing that good. You're not gonna play." You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I get I get the before the New England thing. You know, maybe you you know you say like, "Hey, here's the reasoning, blah blah." But at this point, it's just so painfully obvious he just doesn't want to play him. I mean, you know, if I look if you want to rip Chip for, I'm not saying you are, but if people want to rip Chip for the whole he doesn't relate to players thing, I do think there's maybe some truth to that. But I think this is an instance where. I mean, DeMarco is just not playing well. So, I mean, you know, Chip can meet with him every week and, and coddle him and try to be like, you know, hey, man, maybe next year. But that's not really Chip's job to a certain point. I mean, DeMarco's not playing well enough. DeMar- so DeMarco's not getting on the field. I don't, I don't really think Chip's communication skills should be called into question because of that. 
There was a telling sign this week, Elliot. I just thought of it now. If you go back to Tuesday, last Tuesday, and this guy doesn't say much, and we, we kind of joke about how boring his, his press uh, briefings are, but Pat Shermer had a, said something pretty interesting Tuesday when, when, when he was being asked about the whole running back ro- rotation. And he's, I, I'm paraphrasing him now, but he basically said, we're not going to play a guy just because he makes the most money. Well, that's certainly true. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, do you remember that that quote? Yeah, no, yeah. He was being asked about why, you know, because at, at that point we thought, well, it looks like they're going to split the carries. Like, you know, the, the Bills game, they were almost like an even split. I, I, you know, I think I even asked a question about that. And he said, you know, we're going to play who we feel has given us the best chance. We're not, we're not going to play guys based off who makes the most money. That was almost – and when, you know, Pat says it and you kind of – the way he says it at monotone – it kind of goes by you, but now looking back at it, that that might have been a telling sign that Murray wasn't going to play this week. Maybe they knew so, during the week. So, like, this comes back to the point, and, like, if they don't think he's good enough, why is he on the roster? I get the cap. Thing. cap. I, get the, I know, I get that. I get that. But, this. I know, I do get it, but I'm they saying, cut, like. They're giving a bigger hit. They'd have to cut two other guys. If they cut him today, they'd have to cut two other guys to get back under the cap. Well, Marcus, All right, I, mean, I, I got the quote <laughs> for you. Here's the quote for you, Mark, exactly, because I, okay. I think it was really interesting. I remember him saying I wanted to find it exactly. So here's, here's what he said. So he, the question asked to him was, um, DeMarco Murray was the guy who led the league in rushing last year. Is it disappointing that he's not far and away the best back on this team? That's it. Um, and Shermer said, are we going to base it on how much the player is making, how much he plays? Really, we're trying to win football games, and we want to put fresh running backs in the game. I think some of that is just the outside drama added to it. That's that. Yeah, that, looking back now, that was a pretty telling quote. Well, I hope he he's was. I hope he's ready for a lot of outside drama if they keep him next year. I mean, because <laughs> this is going to be the topic all season if Murray's back. It's going to be the topic in training camp. It's going to be. The, I mean, if Murray turns it around, then you know what? Credit to them. They they stuck with it and it worked. But I mean, do I mean like I know the cap. All right, cap implications aside. You can't put him aside. All right, but I'm saying it's the whole thing. Do either of you guys think DeMarco Murray is going to rush for like 1,200 yards next year? With the Eagles? No. Right. Mark? I mean. Could he? No. Could he? Yes. Will he? Probably not. Right. So it's kind of like you're just setting yourself up for the same thing. Like, I I don't know. I I understand the cap application. Don't get me wrong. I completely get it. But I don't know. I just think sometimes. I asked you this last night. I asked a couple guys this. All right, you get you get rid of your Murray's gone. You're cutting him. You're taking the, that crazy cap hit. Are are Matthews and Sproles back? I mean, I'm not so sure Sproles is back, but I think Ryan Matthews probably is. All right, well, if, Matt, if Matthews and Sproles are both back, you're talking about over twenty million dollars being being allocated to the running back position. That's crazy. And, but but my cap my counter to that would be. Do you want the same three running backs next year? Like, like, and you're already going to have 16 or whatever it is committed, 15 million committed to them. You know what I mean? So, so under any circumstance, you have 15 million. It's not like, it's not like we're saying you're going to go out and spend 20 million next well, year. Well, no, I backs. think if, I mean, if I thought the plan was, I could be wrong. I thought the plan was Murray was going to be good. <laughs> I think that was their plan. I didn't know he was going to stay. But the plan was this year you have what you have, Murray, Matthew Sproles, Barner, I thought next year they would let they would let Sproles go and Barner would become because Barner is like a poor man Sproles right now right I mean he they, he does he runs similar styles he's also a punt returner and, you know I thought they figured Sproles was getting older although he's had some pretty good games this year um, that they would let Sproles go at the end of this year and replace him with a younger cheaper Kenyon Barner and then the cap would come down but if you get rid of if you get rid of Murray can you you know can you get rid of Sproles and you only have Matt who's who you have Ryan Matthews and Kenyon Barner as your you're too so bad. I'm looking. I'm looking at the the contracts of 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 Sproles and Matthews right now. Sproles is in his last year, next year. So you can cut him; it don't cost you nothing, or barely nothing. If oh you yeah, can. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So Sproles next year has a four and a half million dollar cap hit. Right. If they cut him, it's only a million. Right. Ryan Matthews. Sorry. Let me let me pull that one back up. Ryan Matthews, I think, is around the same deal with that. But he four, is three and four. He, he he has a cap hit of five million. Oh, of, of four million next year. Four, right? But if they cut him, it's still three million. So he's he's going to be yeah, back. Yeah, they're not giving him Matthews. 
So if you so if you cut Sproles and uh, Murray. Murray, you're looking at 14 million in dead cap for running backs. Right, and you got to add somebody. You're not going to just go with two running backs. Well, but I th- I think you draft somebody at that point. Yeah, but you, along with offensive linemen and quarterbacks and cornerbacks and linebacker. I mean, they, they, they don't have 15 draft picks. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they got a lot. Of, I'm not debating with you. They don't have a, they don't have a lot of holes they need to fill. But I mean, like, I just I don't know. I just, I would I would not bring Murray back. I mean, like if they do it, I'm not going to like kill him. But I think I would just and plus also at a certain point. I mean, if you're chip, this season's been to some degree a like, disaster. All right, I'm going to say this. If you cut DeMarco Murray, and I'm not – I see – I understand all the, the thousand reasons why you could and should. But if you cut him, you're probably not re-signing Sam Bradford. Not oh, no. <laughs> I'm saying. Or you're not getting, a, you're not getting another big-time quarterback because where's that money coming from? They don't have a ton of cap space. As it yeah, is I, – I don't know what their cap space is going into next year. But I, I do know right now. they, they now have they, at least $12 million well, opening up because Bradford's going to – I mean, that's free agent right there. You gotta, you gotta replace them, unless you, unless you bring in a young cheap guy. Quarterback, very possible. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wouldn't. I look. I wouldn't lose if, if Chip wants Sam Bradford back. I wouldn't lose him just to get rid of Murray. I'm not saying like, yeah. I'm not saying like Murray is like you know like he's got to go no matter what. I just think like, I no, think I'm the, the both, bad outweighs well, the good. They both could be gone, but then your quarterback. Then you better, you better find a way to you know draft. You you better fall in love with one of the the, the, the college quarterbacks, and that's who you're going with. Or you take a gamble on a guy like RG three or a Kaepernick or something. They ain't coming for free. No, but they're not. <laughs> but they're not coming for twelve million. Mm, if you get a bidding, if, depends on how many people want them. Well, I guess I would just be uh, yeah. surprised. RG three could get traded. The Redskins people are talking that they might trade for him, and then then you take on that's fifteen. He's supposed to make fifteen next year. That sounds like a move right up Chip to GM's alley. Let's yeah, bring on I was, was going to say. Can, Let's can, bring can on we, that kind of contract. All right, can, can we throw uh, in a second? <laughs> so we have gone, we've gone about 35, 40 minutes on this podcast without talking about Sam Bradford. Before we wrap oh, up and, and kind of look ahead to Saturday night. Now, there's been a lot of conversation. I, I just find this whole thing amusing more than anything. Uh, Bradford, he made some nice throws, no doubt about it, on Sunday night. He put up some big yards. He also turned the football over three times. Um, I want to know how each of you thought Bradford played specifically in the game against the Cardinals because, I mean, there are, <laughs> there's a segment of people out there who want to make you believe that this guy, you know, is, a, is just playing at a, a great level right now. Uh, here's what he did on Sunday night. He was 28 of 41, 361, pair oh. of touchdowns, pair of interceptions, uh, fumble, three turnovers. Before you guys give your uh, opinions on him, I just want to throw this out there. This is from another quarterback earlier this season. I want to see if either of you guys can guess which quarterback this is. Um, so this guy went in a, in a 43 to 18 loss. So very similar to what we saw last night. Uh, this, this quarterback went 33 of 46 for 335, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, and he carried the ball nine times for 51 yards. Anyone know who that might be? Oh, I'm going to guess Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was a guy you just mentioned a few minutes ago. Though. That was Kaepernick. You got it, Mark. Yeah, that was against. That, against. that was against uh, Pittsburgh. Okay, and he got benched a few games afterwards. So anyway, go ahead, uh, Elliot. Your thoughts on Bradford on Sunday night? I mean, the guy's elite. What can you say? Like, you know, I mean, I saw him complete a few passes over fifteen yards that were real nice. You know, like right on the money. He actually did it. It was good. No, I mean, look, he played well. I don't like. I mean, he played. He played like okay. He he had some nice throws in the beginning of the game. He kept him in it for a little bit. The pick six, obviously, this is the funny thing. So the pick six, people go, oh, well, the game was over. Well, everyone ripped Mark Sanchez for that pick six he had against the Buccaneers. That game was over too. I mean, at the end of the day, he turned the ball over three times in, in against a really good team. And you know, Mark Mark wrote, wrote about it on Monday morning at NJ.com, and I think the heading is perfect. He's good. He's not good enough. You know, like we, we can continue to cross our fingers and, and the Eagles can can hope that maybe he somehow miraculously turns into a better quarterback. But he's not going to be a top 10 guy. I mean, at the, and this is the this is the other thing. Every, everyone says, oh, he's, he's really played well the last four weeks. He's got like five touchdowns in the past four <laughs> games or something like that. So, I mean, it's, it's not like he's out here like killing it. He's 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 a average quarterback. That, and that's what he's going to be. And whenever he makes. Uh, one or two good throws. Everyone gets so excited. Like, 
oh, he's finally reached his potential. But he's never shown he's able to make those those impressive throws, which are are in some ways just NFL throws. It's not like he's like you know scrambling around and, and I mean you watch Cam you watch what Cam Newton did against the Giants, and that's an elite quarterback. That's what that's like a special guy. Or even Eli Manning. Eli Manning good against Carolina, bringing them back. Right. Sam Bradford's good. He's not special. He's just not. He's not going to be that guy. And so everyone wants him to be. Everyone, And I don't blame him. The, every, I don't blame the fans for hoping he's good. Of course they're going to hope he's good. But he's just not. <laughs> I, I, Elliot, we don't, I don't often say this. I, I agree with everything that you just said. Boom. So. There's one thing I can do. It's going to make a bad – it's make a good Sam Bradford argument. I mean, <laughs> he, he's I'm, – I'm not in any – I mean, Sam Bradford belongs in the NFL. He, he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. There's no – there aren't 32 better than him. So he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. But he's he's just like a lot of guys that are starting quarterbacks in the NFL. He's going to go 8-8. Eight, eight and eight. He's going to go 9-7 and seven and maybe sneak into a playoffs once every once and again. He's not – he's not – I mean, again, I, maybe it's because I did watch that giant Panther game yesterday or Sunday afternoon, and when I saw Cam Newton who – yes, I could, I will be surprised if Cam Newton doesn't win a Super Bowl before he's done playing. I watched Eli Manning who is a – you know, he's the most crazy quarterback of all time because he could look great one bad next day, but he has two Super Bowl rings. You know, so, he, you know, he's, he's done it. And then I watched Sam – and even Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer is good. I mean, and he, he's old and he gets, he's been hurt a lot. But when he's healthy, like that's, that's a diff- there are a lot of people who are comparing Bradford and Palmer a lot this week because, or last week because, you know, injuries and all that. The difference is Palmer was really good in Cincinnati before he got hurt and then he got sent to Oakland. It looked like his career was over. And now he's rejuvenated himself back to where he was in Cincinnati as one of the best quarterbacks in football. Bradford was never – he was he was the first pick in the draft. Okay, Ryan Leaf was the second pick in the draft. I mean, that don't make just because you were picked high doesn't make you good. It makes you you were good at college. Can you imagine how different Sam Bradford's life would be if he wasn't picked number one overall? I mean, seriously, like he was a second was, round pick or something. Yeah. <laughs> he would have a lot less money. I tell you that. Yeah, he would. Hey, That's good for true. him. He was good in college. He had one or two really good years at college. That was eight years ago at this point. Oh, yeah. he had, <laughs> as a, if Bradford was in his second year as a as a pro. If this was his, you know, if he was in that, you know, whatever, a class of 2014, I'd say, oh, you know what, this guy's showing me something. He he might, you know, I could see him getting better. You don't get better in year seven and eight. You just don't. You and, I, and I know the game was over at that point, but that interception he threw. Um, Which God, one? I'm going mispron- to mispronounce his name now. The the uh, Pick six? The Honey Badger. He threw it oh, to, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I get the game's over. But you, th- that was a terrible read and throw. He throws it right to him, yep. and, I, you know, the guy gets injured on the play. But he just – I don't know. I mean, when I watch him, again, like, he has some nice throws. But then you also argue, like, are these nice throws or are these just throws that we're, we're surprised to see him make because you, you want him to be good so bad, you know? I mean, a lot of these throws, these guys are, are kind of wide open. I mean, he had one nice throw on third down. He, got he through can make good too. throws. He's an out. All NFL quarterbacks can make good throws. That's why they're, I mean, right. it's hard to get to the NFL without being able to make a good throw every once and again. But what he reverted last night to a quarterback that he was. I mean, why I was praising him somewhat in the wins over Buffalo was the good decision-making. And that's what we were told about him. He makes good decisions. He gets rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't make mistakes. Well, last night, he got rid of the ball quickly still, but he didn't make great decisions, and he did make mistakes. He when, when when Sam Bradford's making mistakes, game's over. He, he, he's not good. Brett Favre could make mistakes, and he made a ton of them in his in his, in his Hall of Fame c- c- career. But, but he was Brett Favre, so he could make a mistake and then come back and throw a seventy-five yard touchdown on a straight line to Sterling Sharp. I mean, it was you know he was the ultimate and you know big play guy. Bradford's not good enough to be able to make mistakes and still come back and be be good. And this is this is one thing I know me and Mark disagree on is. I think this, I agree with everything we just said, but I think despite all of that, if he plays these next two games, and if like you know, even if they don't win, make the playoffs. Let's say he plays next two games. He doesn't. He's got like one interception in the next two games, three touchdowns. He plays decent. There is going to be a team out there that's going to give this guy like twenty five million in guarantee, if so. not thirty. I know. I know you don't think that. I know. But and I, but, there might be, you might be right. There might be just something. To, I mean, the Rams gave Nick Foles money. Yeah, the or, one thing hey, I think or the Eagles Sam traded Bradford, a second round pick for him. I mean, like you know, there's. I just up. think this is the danger. This is the danger. Is there? There's going to be teams out there that are going to want to sign Bradford, 
and you mean you, you said you said maybe maybe RG three would get a lot of money because no, there's a bidding war. You never know. There's a, he's he's under contract. If you trade for RG three, you trade for his contract. Right, but but my point was you, you were saying if they cut RG three and other teams get involved in a bidding war, you never know what's going to happen. And the reality is, Bradford, look, he's probably like a top eighteen to twenty quarterback. Well, that means there's twelve teams out there that could upgrade by having Bradford. And if he's a free agent, there's going to be teams that are going to bid for him. That's just right. I mean, he's gonna, yeah. And so I think, that's, that's where you have to figure out if you're the Eagles, how much you willing to give this guy. And in some ways, in some ways it's a lot like the Marcus Mariota thing in my mind, where with Mariota, it was, well, if you're willing to give up two second round picks, why not just give up a third? Right. So if, if once you decide if he's your guy or not, then you do what it takes to get him, or you just don't do anything. If you think Bradford, Money aside, right? Like, who they, thinks he's the guy? Come on. I, who, I mean, right. hey, Chip they traded a second round pick for him, and him. Chip Chip traded a second round pick for him, oh, and pick. defends he, him to the he, death. He traded, he traded uh, Eric Rowe for him. Big okay, he, he took a chance, didn't work. I mean, he didn't pay him forty million guaranteed. He paid no, but he did pay him thirteen million. Okay, he, he might get thirteen again. He's not getting forty. You know what? Though I, I mean, my, awesome. My, my, well, 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 my point is though, you either you either think he's good enough to be the quarterback next year or not, and if if he doesn't think he's good enough, then you just let him walk. But I, I have a hard time saying oh, like, I'll take walk. then I'll take Bradford for eighteen, but not like thirty two. Like yeah, don't like, be just thinking that way. You have to think that way. There's a salary. This is in baseball where you can just load your roster. There's a cap because <laughs> if the Eagles, you want to cut Murray and get and put thirteen million on the books there. Now you want to sign Bradford and give him something. No, no, no! I don't want. You're, to gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna have five guys on the team. I know, but no, I want to be clear. I don't want to sign Bradford. But when you have an elite quarterback like Bradford, he can carry <laughs> yeah. those five guys. Yeah, we're really not All talking right. about that long touchdown enough, to be honest. I mean, that was. No, a nice I mean, throw. It, yeah. it was an elite throw. It really was. <laughs> so the last thing uh, to, add, really to add what both of you guys had said together here. This is the one thing I think about Bradford. Because Mark, you had said that. There aren't 32 better, which means, you know, someone's going to want him to be the starting quarterback. Elliot, you think he's going to get paid somewhere. I tend to agree with you. The one elite skill Sam Bradford has in the NFL is timing. He came in, he was the last guy before the new CBA, (laughs) and now he's going to be a free agent. All these teams need quarterbacks. This guy knows how to get paid. And that's what I'm saying. He's going to get paid. And it's just a question of whether the Eagles are going to be the one to do it. You know, like there's there's getting paid and there's getting paid. Yeah, he's not going to play for free. I don't think – I think you guys are over – maybe I'm giving general managers in, in this league too much credit for I think – which I'm surprised with because you don't normally do that. But I think you because are. I, I mean, well, maybe because the guys I talk to are intelligent and they think Bradford's not good at all. <laughs> I know three teams that aren't going to sign him no matter, and, uh, no matter what. I can, for what it's worth, those are all good teams. But like – One of them is a little better than the Eagles. All right, all right. Look, 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 all right. Nick Foles got $14 million in guaranteed money, right? And it was a mistake. He's bad. Ryan Tannehill got $40 million. And it was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, but, see, but that's what I'm saying. These teams make mistakes when it comes to quarterbacks. The Eagles, the Eagles made a mistake. when it, They've already made a mistake, right? They, they traded for this guy. So my point is – I don't know if that was a mistake. That was a chance. You have to take a chance. All right, but it didn't work. It has right. not worked out. Would you it agree with that? I agree 100%. So you don't right. compound a mistake. Well, this brings us back to the DeMarco discussion, doesn't it? No, but the difference is the cap hit. There's no cap hit for letting Bradford go. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just the saying. Most, I, the most amazing part of all this to me is we're having this conversation about DeMarco, about Bradford, and the Eagles are playing for a division title over the next two weeks. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we're talking about this team and all the issues they have, and, and everything we're saying is right. But, you know, somehow, some way <laughs> – they, oh, they, Saturday what? night's the biggest game of the year. They're a three and a half point favorite to beat the Redskins. <laughs> Saturday night, Vegas has made them a, not three, three and a half. That's that's a that's a that's a favorite. They're not that well. Much we all game. know what happened last time Sam Bradford played in a game where the division, where a bad division was on the line. It was he his lost, rookie year, and he lost uh, to Charlie Whitehurst. Uh, so and, 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 again, getting down back, Jesus. Murray, the difference <laughs> between Murray and Bradford. Bradford never led the league in passing. Yep, that, that's true. Murray has a pedigree. I can look at the Marco Murrays and say, "Whoa, this guy was really good." That you look at 2014, my God! Like I don't, I don't look at any Sam Bradford years and say, "Oh man, oh he, I know he was rookie of the year in 2010." God, that must have been a bad class. <laughs> oh, God, Sam Bradford, man, he's one of the most interesting athletes. I got to say, like just in terms of the discussion, I mean, personally, 
he's I'm compelling. Really, he's a great yeah, guy. Is. He's very nice, but I mean, he's not very good. But he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's okay. He's not bad. He better. Is, than... is it? Isn't that what you want out of your franchise no, quarterback? No, <laughs> no point. He's not good enough. But I mean, he's he's the best. I'll say this: he's the best quarterback that the Eagles have had since Donovan. All right, how about this? I'll throw this out of you, out of you, and then I'm sure we probably got to get going soon here. But would you rather pay have Sam Bradford on the books next season, just next season, for 15 million or 15, 16 million, or Sanchez for three? You and you you start the guy in week one with your training camp. He's the guy the entire season. Okay. Would you rather have Bradford for sixteen or Sanchez for three? That's my only choice. Those yeah, those are your only choices. Am I trusting uh, Kelly to use that extra twelve million dollars on the roster, or does someone else get to pick the extra players for the twelve million? <laughs> you got to trust Kelly. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think I'll, I might take Bradford then because <laughs> he can't oh. screw up the other twelve million. Uh, no, I don't. I don't, I'm, I don't want that. That's a bit, you could not, you could cut Murray with that extra twelve. But sorry, go ahead. I don't want Sanchez. I mean, I like Sanchez too, but I don't want him to be my starting quarterback. Yeah. Who's, my backup? Yeah. Who's my backup then? Bad Lewis, Lewis, man. Best best backup in the league. Bad Lewis. Not, yeah, Bad Lewis. Bad Lewis. Tebow. You can bring Tebow back. Oh, oh, bring Tebow. Talk. Now you that, got my attention. <laughs> now that's, that's the way to wrap up the quarterback conversation. All right. Um, Saturday night, Redskins coming in. Two games to go. We'll just end with this because predictions are silly at this point. Do you, have, do you guys have a feeling either way? Like, do you think the Eagles are going to come out and, and play well these last two games? Or is this thing at this point in each of your mind just a complete toss-up as who wins this division? Elliot? It's a complete toss-up. I thought they – I've got a really, a really good feeling from them coming – up to the Cardinals game. I haven't convinced myself they would win and they got blown out. So I give up on trying to figure out this team. They could, they could, you know, lose to the Browns next week or they could beat the Patriots. I don't know if they're going to win or not. I, I give up on trying to figure it out. Any feeling one, one way or the other, Mark? I my yeah, my feelings haven't about, about the Eagles haven't changed at all. My feelings on the Redskins have, and that's the, that's the, for, from an Eagles perspective, that's the scary part. I didn't think the Redskins, I thought the Redskins be, Week one, if you asked me who's going to get the first pick in the draft next year, I would have said probably Cleveland or Washington. And hell, Washington might be you know have a home playoff game. So I was really wrong about the Washington Redskins. Cleveland still might get it, but um, so my and the, 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 the winning the last two weeks, the Redskins showed me something. They beat you know going into Chicago where and they were bad on the road uh, and winning that game. That said something, and then you know they they host Buffalo. Vegas made Buffalo a, a favorite on the road, which a lot of people looked at as saying, "Oh man, something that the Bills are going to win." You know, they, they're they're favored on the road, blah blah blah. And the Redskins handled it. They didn't just beat the Bills. That game was never in doubt. They jumped on twenty one nothing. Game over. So the Redskins are playing much better than I thought they were capable of. Kirk Cousins is is having a very good year. Um, again, I'm not going to say he's elite, but he's having a very good year. <sighs> It, this game's a toss-up to me. This game, and then who knows going to the Meadowlands? If, if that, I mean, if let's assume the Eagles win against the Redskins, now they have to beat the Giants. You would think they would only because they really they've kind of owned the Giants recently. Um, you know, you know what's kind, know. kind of you know it's kind of funny to think, but this kind of wraps it all up. The Eagles got the division on the line next week, right? They, they have a chance to do it. And what are the chance, what are, how confident do any of us feel that DeMarco Murray rushes for 100 yards, the running back they paid big money to, and Sam Bradford throws three touchdowns, their franchise quarterback, right? But somehow we'll probably, one of us will end up picking him, right? But like, but like the two guys that were supposed to carry this team, we got like zero confidence in it all. But we think, you know, I don't know, it just kind of puts everything in perspective. If it I was supposed to win, it's going to be because I think Darren Sproles is going to bring a pump back for a touchdown. Yeah. What a strange, strange season. Two weeks to go. Uh, we'll be back next week after the Redskins game to get ready for Week 17 and, and whatever that means. And they could be eliminated or they could be playing for division titles. So this has been fun. Good conversation this week. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening. Everyone out there, have a Merry Christmas. Elliot, have a Merry Christmas. We'll talk next week. Sounds good. You too. And Mark, you have a Merry Christmas. And everyone out there, um, lot, obviously you guys are Eagles fans. And if you know a lot of Eagles fans, Mark, Oh. Uh, you have a you have a book out that would be a great gift great. for Eagles fans. Tell it's us about great it. Great It's called Eagles Playbook: Inside the Huddle for the Greatest Plays in Eagles History. Uh, Ruben Frank and I wrote it. We we interviewed over a hundred um, different players through the history of the Eagles. I was fortunate enough to to uh, interview Chuck Benner before he passed away. 
He was very good talking about, you know, some of his great plays, the tackle of Jim Taylor, the hit on Frank Gifford, going all the way down to the, you know, to the present with stories about Deshaun Jackson's punt return against the Giants and um, a lot of Donovan McNabb, Randall Cunningham, Reggie White. Seth Joyner actually wrote our forward. Um, it's a great book. It's great for Eagle fans. Uh, if they do lose, you can forget about this year and re- relive the great, the, the great <laughs> of, of, of Eagles history. And Chip Kelly, uh, Chip Kelly liked the book. How about that? There we go. So Chip liked the book. You will too. Everyone out there, have a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. We will talk to you next week after the Eagles and the Redskins. This has been Episode 21 of the No Huddle Show. Follow the show on Twitter at the No Huddle Show for all the latest news and all the links to our episodes right here on NJ.com. 